Becky Jane. Did I get that right? By the way, when I did that, when I said I put the name up there, I was really worried yes. about that. It's like it's all I, fine, yeah. Becky yeah, with yeah, a Y. So, <laughs> uh, uh, no, it, it, the reason I, I say that, folks, is I met Becky on Discord, right? I just mm -hmm. said, hey, who wants to come on my show? And uh, I, I and I love Allegra and I love I love Chris, but I wanted to get some more people from the plot mom's corner of the universe. That's the Discord mm -hmm. server that that Becky's on and I are both on. And Becky said, yeah, she was the first one to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll come. I'm a have yeah. a go hero. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, so Becky, so Becky was really cool to come on the show, and I'm grateful. We were talking about freelancing right before we got on the air. I said, let's hit the button. Mm -hmm. So the first year I did freelancing, the biggest thing I had in my hair, like it's, a, I think it's a natural thing, is your biggest thing you're worried about is what if I fuck this up. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's a perfectly natural thing. It is also the absolute worst mindset to have as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you, it's not that you're not going to make mistakes. You are. But again, this is the the um, presentation you have, the niche you have, the corner of the universe you have that you're deciding, ah, this is going to be my little thing. Mm -hmm. You got to believe you're good at it because if you don't believe it, your clients won't believe it either. They won't take you seriously, and they're right mm -hmm. not to. Yeah. Right? I yeah. Uh, it, it, you can't fake it either. That's the thing. There's a certain authenticity, right? Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a cocky son of a bitch. In my case, or or, or you don't have to be that. <laughs> but you got to believe you can do this. You got to believe that you have the ability and the tools to succeed. Right. No one's mm -hmm. telling you. And the thing about freelancing that makes it really hard is no one's there to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. You yeah. will succeed or fail on your own merits. Mm -hmm. So it's the ultimate test in some ways, in some ways. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to learn that confidence. And then when I so I, I, I did some, you know, temporary. I still actually do have a side gig right now. And I can say it's a side gig because make more money creating than I do with the gig, but it's there in case, you know, there are some months where it's just like, hi, I'm out there. And the universe is mm -hmm. like, uh, uh yeah. Feast and famine. Yeah. There's a little bit of that. So there's mm -hmm. still a little bit of that more of that than I'd like, but that's, that, that is how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reality of the situation is, um, when my attitude went from, I'm going to fuck this up to, I'm going to do this. Mm hmm. Op better opportunities started coming around yeah it's, and it's, sort it, of, it, sorry and like it's, um, succeeding despite so like it might not all go perfectly as you said like things are going to go wrong but I will be able to get myself out of this or I will be able to innovate out of this pivot out of this what have you it's that sort of being able yeah. to shift that mindset yeah and once the mindset that that week when I shifted that mindset was the most money I've ever made in a week ever Ooh. Mm. It was a good week. Now, yeah. it was two months before I saw the other money again, <laughs> but it was a good lesson, right? It's mm. very, and it stuck with me. This is a game of belief of all, like, like oh, when I do these talks, when I do the talks about the freelance mindset, it's like, it's the biggest thing. If mm. you don't believe in your project, it's going to translate to the world. If you don't believe in yourself, that's going to translate into the world. So when you, if you're wrestling with your imposter going, well, who am I to do this? Mm -hmm. Right? You go to your imposter, right? I'm Becky freaking James, bitch. <laughs> you're going to do exactly <laughs> what I'm telling you here. You have to. Yep. Right? <laughs> Stories with heart. You're yeah, going to exactly. feel every single word. That's what I do. That's right. <laughs> you, you know one of these. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, maybe you might have to dance, right? Da, 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 da. Like, whatever. I know that's, not, again, in my, to the outside, it's like, that sounds crazy. But it, seriously, mindset is absolutely everything in life. It really, really is. Yeah. But, you know, no matter what you're doing. Like, yeah. You know, going for a job interview versus, yeah, pitching something. If you don't have that conviction, this is going to be the next big thing. You'd be fools not to hire me, etc. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give you a fun example. So my side gig, I work for a sports team. I legitimately okay. work for a sports team organization, a major one in the Canada. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, I don't do anything as hard mentally as I do here. It's like, it's a break kind of sort of. So I'm mm -hmm. singing, 
So I'm, I'm humming Carry On Wayward Song by Kansas. So there's a security guard in the elevator, and he starts grinning like an idiot. He goes, you are so happy, <laughs> right? And it's just because and, – and, and it's just because I don't – there's nothing to worry about for me here. I'm just here to do a job. That's it. No more, no less. And uh, <laughs> we get off the elevator. I go off the elevator. Uh, I go off to, to draw, deliver some goods, and, and someone's coming on. And I know this poor person because she, she, she's either very tired or very, very, like, angry. So, like, mm. she was in kind of one of those – somewhere in between that – so I go do my delivery. I come back to the elevator guy. I, and we start talking on the way down. I got him laughing again. So she goes, she's either working too much or mm-hmm. she cares too much. I'm not sure which. Or both. It's possible it was both. Mm-hmm. And again, mindset was everything. That security guard left my conversation with me with a big smile on his face. Again, my job's not complex. Mm-hmm. But it's what I do with it while I'm there. Yeah, sort of energy that you then inspire in other people. Yeah. Well, we do that all the time. Like, that's the one thing I think we, nobody realizes is, you know, you have the ability to do affect the entire room. Even sometimes if all you want to do is go into your corner and read a book, right? You can mm-hmm. inspire as a whole room. If you're silly, you'll encourage other people to be silly, right? Yeah. And it's hilarious when you get people that actually start playing and having a goofy time. There's like, and it's grown adults that are just like, "This is stupid, but I'm in." Right? And it's yeah. hilarious. They kind of need permission. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Kind of, you know, and that that's kind of the whole deal, right? It's all hmm. we have more power over how we impact each other than we realize, right? Hmm. If I come at you and I'm in a really terrible mood, you'd be like, well, fuck this guy. What the fuck did I come here for? (laughs) Right? And I'd be honest, right? That's an honest thing. But I'm like, but I I can just tell based on just the five or so minutes we've talked, right? You're like, he seems like a good dude. He sometimes (laughs) he's funny. Sometimes he's even funny. And that's a, and again, that mindset will uh, gradually you'll open up a little bit more and then some in who knows what's going to come out of you within the next 20, 30, 40 minutes. Right. So that's, that's the, but again, it's all attitude. It's all just being open, open in my case, just being open to hear, hearing what you're going to say, but it's also just like you have the freedom to say pretty much what you want. So what do you want to talk about? Cool. <laughs> Well, I guess it's um, so. Yeah, you know, you've spoken about our shared connection on the Plot Mom uh, yes. server. Um, so yeah, well, how did you get on there? And then I'll say how I found my way onto that lovely corner of the internet. So Allegra was introduced to me. So I do it every once in a while on my Facebook page. I will actually recommend me a book. But the catch is, you can't pitch your own. Yeah. Right, pitch somebody else's, and if mm-hmm. you get the right pitch, I will buy that book and one of yours. Right, it's also my secret way of training authors how to pitch because they yeah. can pitch, their, pitch the buddies well, they can pitch themselves, but you work to that point. So, anyway, uh, Allegra was recommended twice on the same board, mm-hmm. and I just picked the one that was slightly better pitched, and then I contacted Allegra. And she came onto the podcast, and then I found out she's secretly a co-writing cultist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the collective. <laughs> yeah. I read her book last year, by the way, too. It was really good. And ACL mm-hmm. was the one I that I, yes. I read. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, her niece Sands did a wonderful job. And from there, I've also interviewed Chris Russell. We ended up, Chris Russell and I ended up talking about video games of all things, just Excellent, video games. Yeah. Like we have similar tastes. Mm-hmm. so and then yeah like i'm not there as much as i'd like to be but i'm but doing drop in. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i drop in every once in a while and that's all i have time for and it's just like but no i it's cool that allegra's doing what she's doing i think there's some really good people there and i mean that's why i opened it up i actually am interviewing another gentleman from the from mm-hmm. the collective next week cosplay is his name Yes, I think that's yeah. his Discord name. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 
and maybe yeah. his author name too. Yeah. It's the author name as well. It's just, just, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Cause is coming on the play. No, Excellent. I'm totally yeah. intended there. Absolutely intended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified I might start becoming a dad joker. That actually worries me a little bit. I mean, you know, people who think they are penny are uh, very intelligent and very amusing. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not that. It just, it's just, it's like, it's like a cult, though. It's just like, it, it, I think it just wears you down with, 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 with just how bad some of those jokes really are. It's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and we get the occasional good ones, like, oh, that's not bad, actually. Oh, yeah. God, becoming one of you. No, no, no. yeah, yeah. Really like, <laughs> the next thing you know, the slippery slope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like so, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing all, I'm doing all the worst ones too, and I'm like, God damn, what the hell happened? I was funny once. What, <laughs> what, what? How did this change? How did I become so funny? But I mean, that, that's, that's the, that's the thing, right? You, you, you get older, and you, your things change, and, and I'm not sure if it's more right or wrong. I think the older I get, the crazier I become. But I mean, like in a good way, I just don't give a fuck as much. So I know, right? Like I honestly think when you are an adult you are actually going back to how you were as a you know a kooky child you're just more open about it so you like try and hide who you are in your teenage years to fit in and then through the 20s 30s 40s you're like rediscovering that only now you have money and a car <laughs> money thing's kind of iffy but i mean you know what happens is, is somewhere along the way in your 20s you get hit with the reality of the confidence you lack and your 30s mm -hmm. is spent explaining that confidence again but then in your 40s you just become a full-fledged supervillain yeah i've got my moat and my crocodiles so yeah <laughs> so, so you have a secret layer so that's not what you're saying yes <laughs> that would be do good like in the wilds sign? of wales <laughs> do, 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 do you have like a neon sign that says secret villains lair because that would be like totally like ironic. It would be, wouldn't it? Especially if it was in like the Chinese pa leaf pattern or something that's really yeah, cool yeah, right yeah. now. And in neon pink. Lush. So this is going to age me. One of my favorite cartoons of all time was Darkwing Duck. Oh, right. Yeah. This, 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 uh, <laughs> my favorite was when he initially fought the Fearsome Five. And he's looking for the secret hideout. Mm -hmm. So Negadek just puts this big giant ass flag. That that that, right. that that is just right there. This <laughs> does not care at all. This is where I am. Do something about it. But that's not how Darkwing Duck finds. I mean, he finds this little crumb on the road that nobody else would look for. Mm -hmm. He figured it out. Sorry, right. but all the while there's this giant ass flag behind him that that he did not notice. Right. right? Yeah. So Mega Duck calls him out on that. It's like. I, I knew you would notice the big giant flag I put up there just because I could, right? Mm -hmm. And um, but I mean, there's certain there's a certain like like um, bra bravado to it. I, I actually like the idea of a villain going, "This is where I am. Do something about it, or mm -hmm. don't. Either way, yeah. I'm here." Yeah, it's really calling them out, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's calling everybody out, right? Mm -hmm. but I. I and if the vil villain wins, sometimes they become the good guy. That happened in Xant. Evil mm -hmm. King Trent became good King Trent because he won. <laughs> Is that like a history revisionist thing? So like now no, he's it's the good king. That's just literally what happened. Like in 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 the first book, he 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 became king. Mm -hmm. He was an evil King Trent, and then he wasn't. He was just yeah. good King Trent. He's, yeah, and and it's just like. I, I see what you did there. That's actually clever, right? <laughs> and you, you know, I, 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 I guess, I guess the the big lesson I think there's two lessons that you can get from the Xanth books. First is, doesn't matter if you're a hero or a villain. I mean, there are some just human characteristics that just translate all the way through. Mm -hmm. Second, you know, if you win, you can get away with a lot of shit. Yep, I'm like now you're the city administrator so now you've got to do the dirty work anyway of like making sure the bins get collected on time <laughs> yeah, it's all just pol it's all just um bureaucracy that, that, all the way down that, that, that's that's what, like are you sure you want to rule the world mm. it's like it's uh, like, like why because see the see the poop here you're cleaning mm -hmm. that up that's your job 
That still doesn't sound like fun. No. <laughs> Why do you think they don't want the job anymore? They yeah. want you to have it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just putting up a token resistance here to make you think that there's a prize here to be won. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I, I mean, you missed the free parking spots, but I mean, like that. I mean, that that that's a small price to pay. I think in the grand scheme <laughs> of things. Yeah. Oh. That's right, jokes. I, I've broken down power to parking lots and poop. I, I don't know what that says about me exactly, but maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's extremely practical. You know, the waste still needs to be taken off the streets, you know, so somebody's got to do it. Yeah. yeah. I'm using the word poop. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 does that, does that, that make me less serious or more serious? Uh, well, I'm dealing with a five-year-old who thinks that that is the best sort of insult to throw at somebody. So, yeah, I'm like, I'm taking you a little, is, tiny is, is, bit less serious. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, that's just you're, my stage in life. It's your poops? Is that what you're, is that what you're, you're, you're I'm assuming so, your son? Yeah. So he is, he is like, that is the highest form of insult to throw at somebody, you poopy face. And I'm like, you, you, oh, you goodness face. me. I'm trying to convince him that poo on a poo stick the size of France is uh, an even worse one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see this now. He goes yeah. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to be going to school soon. If he hasn't already, he's going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's then, going to teach us a slightly confused. <laughs> <laughs> Not even just the teachers. Other kids are going to be confused. So wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come, my parents haven't told me this one. Like, yeah, it's the worst insult ever. It's the worst insult ever. Mm -hmm. and, then they're, and they're looking at, and then they're, they're like, I don't know if it's the worst insult ever, but I'm confused. <laughs> like, who on a I mean, poo? It's like poo stick. The size yeah. of France. That's a the big poo of, stick. Yeah, that, that's, that's a huge poo stick. That's a lot of poo. Like, mm. I, and we're not yeah. talking Winnie either. We're just talking poo, right? It's, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd be confused and oddly curious. Is that possible? And honestly, is it? even if it is, do you want to find out if it is? Do you also, really want to? add in that a poo stick is something that you it's a game that you play so you go to a river with a bridge over it and mm -hmm. you stand on the bridge with your stick you drop it on the one side you go to the other side and see who's stuck who's stick one that's poo sticks that's yes, playing poo sticks so a poo stick the size of france is like where are you even going to drop that <laughs> in, in like the ocean that's the only place you can drop it Boosh. yes <laughs> Not, yeah, Pacific Ocean would have a bad day. It's like, why did you do that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, now, now you've got a silly story in my head. It's like the, the war of the poo sticks, and it was settled in mm -hmm. the Pacific Ocean because it was the only place big enough. On yeah. one side, the poo stick was as big as France, and on yeah. the other side, the poo stick was as big as England. Yeah. And one of them well. had one. <laughs> teeny tiny little poo stick in comparison. <laughs> That's why England has got the advantage in this poo sticks because there's a lot less move, uh, resistance to it moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it would be a lot easier to airlift it if that's what's needed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All the helicopters. Yeah. Much cheaper. Better for the environment. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, 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 never, I never thought poo sticks were environmentally dangerous, though. I mean, just oh, honestly. but transporting the poo sticks I'm thinking of now. If we've got to go to the Pacific to have this poo stick war, how are well, you going to you, get the poo you, sticks you, there? You're going to have to. I, I don't think the Indian Ocean is big enough. Yeah. And the Atlantic Ocean might be big enough, but that's that. I don't know. I see. I wouldn't want to have that contest close to my home. Right. I want to give it to so somebody else. Go over there with California and Japan. <laughs> yeah, so there's only you can figure this out. <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> we actually came up with a weird little story there about a poo stick contest that could only be settled in the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. And you know, kaiju probably be involved too. Like, yeah. You know that they're the only things big enough to move these poo sticks. So. Yeah, I think we got this. You know, co-author opportunity here. <laughs> yeah, we do potentially, potentially, potentially. It's just like, huh, huh. Tell you what, you can you can have it. I'll let you. I'll let you. Have it. <laughs> I'll let you just have this one. I have my own silly stuff to do right now. The plate is even too sillier close. than this. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I read a story about stick figures revolting against God because they weren't pretty enough. I mean, yeah, 
That, well, I, I think I, that's pretty silly. That's pretty silly. It's pretty silly, but I'd be interested in it because, like, yeah, that answer that asks quite a lot of questions. And, it does. Yeah. It's pretty well, fun. My, well, my creator was just lazy. He just, he just decided he wasn't going to make them as pretty as the rest of the world. And they took it personally. Mm. And they said, it, nope, we aren't going to do this anymore. And then so, so the creator did what any rational person would do and run away from angry little stick figures coming after him. Because you totally would. What about yeah. like if are they in a flip book too? So there's a different stick figure on each page. I wish it's going to be more like a like a golden story book comic. Like this is my Doctor Seuss story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's then, it's, it's uh, does it break the fourth wall too? So you've got like a, stick oh, a little bit coming out at you and like a yeah, little bit. That'd be cool. A little bit. A little bit. Not entirely, but a little bit. Hmm. Right. They know they know they're part of a world. The creator is kind of it's me on a bad day like i don't want to do anything and i'm just being a coward because i i i, I i'm terrified of my own creations hmm. right so yeah not me exactly but i could imagine it, definitely see myself being that lazy once i was like eh, mm -hmm. you don't need to be pretty but i want to be pretty yeah right <laughs> Yes, it sometimes it does seem as though our creations do have a life of their own and a voice of their own. And they like, do. They do. They definitely do. Yeah, they definitely do. Like, like we follow. Um, we follow. Like every story follows a certain pattern, and really, the only question we, the only like the real fun thing is, how do we play with the expectations of the story? Because everybody knows what the story is. Hmm. So like right. which twists and turns you mean to get there? Like... Yeah, exactly, because that's what that's what's different, mm -hmm. right? I have an Alice in Wonderland Greek mythology mashup because I realize Alice and Pandora are the same story. Okay, yeah, right. I can right. see that. Yeah, yeah, they're the same story. If you sit there mm -hmm. and think about it, so if they're the same story, then when Alice when Alice opens Pandora's box and gets a cat inside her head. What does that look like? Mm. Right? Because we go, when Pandora opens the box in Greek mythology, she doesn't fall, get out of the situation she's in. She's permanently stuck there. Alice, mm. on the other hand, figures out her way out of the rabbit hole. But it's still yeah. the same, the same calamity. Curiosity compels both of them to fall down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um and then Pandora does end up opening hope at the end. Yeah, so hopes, at, hopes at the bottom of the box, mm. which is a power, which is a powerful thing. But Alice didn't oh, didn't get hope at the bottom. She actually escapes. Mm. Yeah, she so she gets she succeeds. Yeah, she mm. succeeds. Pandora fails. So, and I have fun with that. I'm not going to say how or why, but I have fun with that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, but those are the things I work on. So, what kind of mm -hmm. stuff do you like to work on? So, yeah, talking about those like loud characters that just want to shut up, <laughs> and a little bit of the arrogance earlier. So, yeah, the 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 series that's closest to my heart and the one that I always come back to and keep on working on is about an extremely arrogant swordsman, and in a parallel universe to earth and he doesn't realize that the two universes are connected um and uh it's his adventures misadventures he's a character that everybody sort of loves to hate yeah um and because he is so arrogant but he is also very good at what he does and he's well-meaning but he's just also an ass <laughs> and i promise you know i'm a nice person i promise however this guy is extremely loud in my in my head and he demanded to be released into the world and wouldn't take no for an answer. And that's where I find myself now. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to ask an odd question. If it's too personal, you don't have to answer. Mm -hmm. Right. But it sounds to me, it sounds to me that he has at least a little bit of a basis off, like just maybe some of the dickish people you've encountered possibly in your dating life once upon a time, maybe in family. Ah, right? no, no. Although you would. So um, the inspiration, I guess, comes from, I went to um, 
university in the university um, up in up in Scotland, um, and there are in the UK there are Russell Group universities, I guess, a bit like the Ivy League universities in the mm-hmm. states, um, and there are two universities that people want to get into, and that's Oxford and Cambridge. And then they say St Andrews is for the Oxford and Cambridge rejects, but I applied to St Andrews because I really wanted to go to St Andrews, right? So I get to university there, and it's filled with these arrogant people that didn't quite make the grade for the other ones, but that that's what they truly had their heart on. And so this, their story turned into, well, you know, it's it's kind of their fault or somebody else's fault, et cetera. But I thought there were genuine people there that I met who were absolutely lovely, but the arrogance in them was staggering. <laughs> so that's where the inspiration comes from. And also a tiny bit of myself as well, all that. So, oh, absolutely. you know, you've got to have a bit of yourself in each of the characters. And so there oh. is a big part of me that's like, I am the bee's knees. <laughs> I'm the shit. And this is my story. So why I'm awesome. Right. Exactly. And yeah. And sometimes just saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, just because don't know any better or you know social situations are hard sometimes don't so, care no i say I, I think i care too much you see <laughs> see Oops, see i see I, I okay i'm gonna ask this question please don't punch me how old are you i am 36 i am 41 slightly older. Ooh, so you slightly. definitely got your moat they give you a moat at 40 right so you can be a super villain no damn it <laughs> I, i'm i'm working on a getaway car because the next okay. phase for the podcast is I'm going to go on the road legitimately with it all the time. Nice. Right. That's the, the same. No, see, I had this during the pandemic. I had a lot of epiphanies. But I think that my my favorite one, not not the one that not the big lesson I learned, but my favorite one was. I don't actually have to cooperate with anything or anybody. I can do what I want. He <laughs> he. <laughs> Yes, there is this idea that we're sort of on a treadmill, aren't we? Um, There was a band that formed out of our school and they called themselves the automatic because the automatic thing is to get your GCSEs, get your A-levels, go to university, start working. And so they wanted to come out of that path and so went off the automatic path. Um, I like them. (laughs) There we go. No, I mean, I mean. I mean, here's the thing. A lot of us cooperate because we were told we're cooperating. But one day you wake up and you just have this realization. I don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do this. And you it's can like, choose. I can choose to do something else. Now, it's good to have a, a, something else in mind. Mm-hmm. All right, it's very optimistic. because I, I can do whatever I want. And it's true. You can. And you will. More often than not. But what do you want right yes Mm -hmm. and that was a sort of big thing for me so I'm a scientist and um, I went into science when I was younger I wrote and I still I kept on writing all throughout um, my studies you know all those GCSEs and A-levels that I amassed but I figured if I made some money first that would be a lot easier and I kept on putting off that dream putting off that dream putting off that dream until I was like you know what I've got a choice (laughs) Yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah, do well, this. Because, <laughs> well, other things are useful. Here's mm-hmm. what you're called to kind of call to do. I, 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 right. And the world kind of tells you what that is sooner or later. Now, you can still choose to walk away from it. That is fair. You mm-hmm. have that freedom. However, right, when it's an unconscious desire to flee, I've noticed that you sooner or later have to come back to it. You actually have to make the conscious choice to walk away if you don't want to do this, right? Consequently, mm-hmm. you, if you really want to go somewhere with it, you also have to make the choice, I'm, I'm all in. And it's funny. Mm-hmm. That's how life works. It's all yeah. in or you're all out on everything. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what it is. It can be work, relationships, jobs. You're all in or you're all out. Mm-hmm. There's really no middle ground. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah. But of course, I that, that lesson didn't come in until later in my life when I was older slash wise, question mark, wiser. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you just, you, you just, you, you, you realize that 
again, there's a lot, a lot in this life you actually have to do. And it's like, oh my gosh, I never had to do this. Why the fuck is everybody doing this? Yeah. <laughs> right? It's, it's what they've been told. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the automatic. Off you go. <laughs> You're on autopilot. A lot of people are. I, I, I think I think the one thing the one shocking thing to me is I realize that a lot of people is self awareness is a journey you have to choose to take, and it's not yeah. self healing. It's being able to look at yourself honestly in the mirror. That's not easy to do, mm-hmm. and if you really want to get somewhere in this life, you kind of have to. Yeah, and self awareness also comes with that sort of being able to recognize and pick apart who are who is in the mirror behind you so what baggage are you carrying from what from who are these lessons that you want to take with you or not and if not how can you like put them down because they're not serving you yeah exactly like being smart enough to realize that you have to unlearn some of the things that that came before Mm -hmm. which sometimes isn't easy because you're comfortable in those things sometimes too yeah they want you know. Well, well, yeah. I mean, I you have to realize that, like, for me, I'm at that point in my life where I don't really give a shit. Like, I just don't. And I mean that in a good way. Not that I, oh, I wish the worst. No, it's just like, I'm going to do what I want. And whatever that looks like, it'll be fine to me. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So I, that's why I won't have a moat. You know, you know why I won't have a moat? It's too much work. Yeah, it's, it's you, those crocodiles need feeding all the time. Well, there's that. There's also keeping the water clean. There's also just you know making sure it's deep enough, making sure like there's stuff going on. Mm-hmm. You gotta really work at that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so why? Is, I mean, if you're gonna have a, an error, see, I, I'd rather do something like misdirect people, make them think I'm somewhere else. Yeah. Or, Right, because that's less work. Um, that's just less work. Actually, be in plain sight. Yeah. Yeah. No, I actually it's the work. best trick. Mm-hmm. People, that I, again, I, I start to wonder this as I've gotten older. It's like you can read things, you can see things, you can hear things. Why aren't you listening to those things? Mm-hmm. They they choose whether or not they take them in. Maybe they will, and it'll stick with them, and they'll be later on thinking why is this still here mm. choose to look That's, at it yeah that that, that happens i mean i i've, I've done that I, I i've i've when i've traveled sometimes i'll go like i'll go back to a city i've lived in before and the thing is i've lived in a lot of cities so one of the cool things about that is you can kind of see the story when you grow up in a town in one town your whole life you see a story mm-hmm. unfold page by page by page by page by page mm-hmm. i moved all over the place so it's like I moved to different parts of the book. Yeah. So I started on page one. Then I moved to page 100. Then I moved to page 60. Then I moved to page yeah. 245. Mm-hmm. Right? And you're like, and then you start to put this pattern together of what the story is. And you're like, oh, because you did this, you're going to go here. Because mm-hmm. you did that, you're going to go here. And it's yeah. like, how come nobody else sees this? Then you realize it's perspective. It's perspective too. Yeah, it's perspective. Yeah, whether they live there. And like, how do you feel when you do come back to a place and it has changed on you? I actually, I, I it's better one than when it doesn't. Like, mm-hmm. it, I, it's actually more terrifying when something doesn't change. I went on a plane trip to. I, I was passing through London, Ontario, heading to Toronto. Mm-hmm. London, Ontario. I had grown up there in my teenagers, twenty years. So I'm, I'm in this, I, so this, I lived in Calgary where I'm at. I lived in Phoenix, Detroit, a few other places. So I'm mm-hmm. listening to these people from London having this conversation. And the yeah. thing is about five minutes into this conversation, I had realized I had heard this conversation before. Wow. When I was a kid in London, Ontario. That terrifies me more than when a place is different. Mm. And it's, but, yeah. Right, the pattern, the same pattern, the, yeah, the exact same again thing, again. right down to the mm-hmm. diction. And you're like, yeah. How is that possible? Yeah, like maybe it's in, just ingrained in that place. 
Yeah, no, and that's what you, you know, that's what you conclude. And you're like, I if I had lived there my whole life, I I would never have seen mm. it, or maybe I would really like have, but it would take me a lot longer to. Yeah, that's making me th think of like so you know DNA and RNA transcription. So it's constantly um, copying that code again and again, like a photocopier, and it's kind of like that the DNA RNA transcription of a city. Like it's. Yeah. Ooh, just got a nice chill then. <laughs> it, it, it could. I don't know if RNA if that's the whole thing at once or in pieces. Like you're the pieces, scientist. Yeah. Yeah. It does mm. pieces. So it does what I do. It takes a book, mm. it takes a book and just gives you different parts of the story at different points. Yeah. But right. um if you, you want to learn a tiny bit of Welsh to take Sure. With you? Sure. All right. We got a word, which means a longing for a time and place that no longer exists. And this is where if I went back to my university, my alma mater, yes, the buildings would still be where they are, but the people are different. The lecturers, no, 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 this is St. Andrews and every fucking thing is protected. <laughs> 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 you need to file 80 million permits just to park a car outside. Like, no, <laughs> every fucking thing is exactly where they left it. Um, so, yes, the buildings are all there, immaculate. Um, and, uh, you know, swept every morning by a first year student. Uh, but the people have changed. You know, the lecturers are different. The course curriculum is is different. You know, would I still recognize the material that they're teaching now? Um, on the first year of an engineering degree, by the time you get to the third year, half of what you learned in the first year is out of date and, and needs to be unlearned, which is interesting. So that Welsh word for a longing for a time and place that doesn't exist is hirath. hirath. So you can feel hirath. Yeah. You're hirath. So. It's not an English word, but I, I do think of that every now and again, is that sort of this feels diff feels the same, but is also different. And I bring that into my books as well, because um, as well as being sword and sorcery portal fantasy, it's also a multiverse fantasy. So as well as just moving different worlds, he's also moving different times. And he yep. meets himself who have had different lives, different life experiences. And also the places too. So he feels quite a lot of Herath every now and again. Of just this place no longer exists anymore. No. It, it, I, okay. So I've lived in Calgary three times. Mm -hmm. This version of Calgary is different than the previous two versions of Calgary I lived in. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's quieter. It's a little meaner. It's, it's a little meaner. Still friendly people overall, but it's a little meaner than it was. A little poorer. A little stripped down in comparison mm -hmm. to what it was right it's not my calgary anymore but someone mm -hmm. else's calgary yeah and i think that's just one of the things about growing growing or i don't know if i would all the places i've lived i've gone back a couple times and i and i for me personally it's overrated to want to go back to the same place. Mm -hmm. It just feels overrated to me because why there's comfort in the same thing, in the same mm -hmm. feeling, in the same places, in the same structure. That's why St. Andrews is fucking the same thing after all these fucking hundreds <laughs> of years. There's a comfortable structure. At the college I'm at, there's a college by here Students actually build upon that college year by year by year by year by year. So it's mm -hmm. not, it's a different looking campus every yeah. couple of years. And to me, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everything must evolve. Yeah. Everybody and leaves their mark, but then they go. Yeah. Exactly. Everything must evolve. Change is the universal constant. Mm -hmm. So to truly be living, you must be okay with change. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, there are memories I have in my childhood and my life that I were genuinely happy with. And I'm glad I got them. But I don't know if I want to go back to them, if that makes mm. sense. No, yeah, that's fine, too. Yeah, because there are other happier moments to come. Yeah. So that's maybe what my swordsman will learn. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, or maybe your swordsman will learn, much like I learned, that he doesn't have to do what he's doing. Yeah. And then what? And then what does he want to do? 
Yeah, that, that is something that he confronts in book two because he's always been a swordsman. He's been trained to be a swordsman. This is what he's good at. Um, when that sort of, when he's, uh, he takes a step back from that to think, why am I like this? What were the driving forces that made me this? Who are my friends now? And, and how can they help this broken guy in the mirror? And some of them can and some of them can't. Got to help so, yourself too. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. No, you must help yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, here's the thing. All the help in the world from the outside means nothing unless you don't unless you don't want to change, mm -hmm. right? You have to want to become something more, to be something more, to change. If you want to go back to what you felt before, you never will. Mm -hmm. For that is the past. You have to go into the future, whatever that looks like, as terrifying as it might be. Mm -hmm. And maybe just maybe you have to believe it'll be better. Or is, it, is he's going to do make it better? <laughs> I, some, I, I, I somehow I somehow feel that he might come to regret that concept. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I'm not that evil. Am yeah, I? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want a moat with crocodiles in it. I mean, yeah. that's more work than mm -hmm. I'd want to do, but I mean, that doesn't mean necessarily. <laughs> And you're actually going to put my hideout in, like, what is it, Japanese in script there? Neon. No, no, neon. Yeah, flashing neon. Yeah, it could look cyberpunky. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm also thinking that sort of, like, yeah, Chinese leaf uh, motif that's so fashionable right now. And, yeah, I can't find a single example. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So basically what you're telling me, what you're telling me is, see, you are villainous enough to do that to him. Just a Yeah, bit. I am, Take totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a highlight was when people were making memes about book two, and it's that one where there's this guy hitting another guy with a guitar, and it's like, Becky James, read as a book two. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, I'm torturing my readers. That's your whole thing. It's like, I'm going to torture you guys because I can't. And like, rip out your heart, and you feel every single thing. Because, yeah, my, my sort of byline is like stories with heart. And what you don't realize is it's stories with your heart on a, on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> you really oh, are yeah. a supervillain moats, crocodiles, <laughs> eating people's hearts. <laughs> or at least keeping them as a trophy on a plate. <laughs> so it's just I'm like... a very nice person. <laughs> I'm a very nice person, I swear. You know, the oh, king this... took over the world and became the nice king. <laughs> I mean, I you became the king of Trent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, folks, we have gotten to that point of, of, of like, you know, displaying the blood of her enemies on a plate. And, 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 and I know, how, my I... dear readers. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> And, and, Can be and, one of those dear readers. <laughs> so, so, do your readers have safe words? I'm just, I'm just asking. <laughs> they really should do, shouldn't they? <laughs> yes, I'll give them. I'll give. That them should some. be a byline. It's like readers, you'll need a safe word after reading with me. I yeah. recommend, and then, then it's like I recommend pineapple mm. or pina colada. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Courgette zucchini. <laughs> yes, something. Something. Oh dear. Uh, this 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 conversation's going to some twisted places now. Yeah. I, I, mean, I think I think you really are a super villain. Super villainess. Thank you. Super villainess. <laughs> Do you have a code name? Oh gosh. Um all right. So um, must, that, that, that's the first question I think I've asked you this whole this whole interview. Actually, do you have an actual code name? Do I have an actual code name? Well, so um, a lot of the times I'll go by Rosin, which is um, Rose Thorn in Welsh. <laughs> she has a code name, folks. <laughs> so if you see like Rosin on. <laughs> She has a code and... <laughs> but it's a Welsh word, so it's not exactly like a secret thing. Or, you know. <laughs> I can oh, see dear. this now. I, I, I can see this now. We mentioned Darkwing Duck earlier. We see like a smoke bound goes, I am mm. the terror that flaps in the night. I will rip your heart out of the pages of your book. And I, <laughs> I will take your safe words and throw them away. I am Rosen. 
villains. <laughs> yep. And I, I have completely butchered Darkwing Duck with that. But this is how you do it, folks. You do it with class and dignity and style or silliness. Pure. Right. Good. All of the above. Yes. Yeah. yeah, all of the above. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just be silly. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> where, do, where do we go from here? Where do we go now? <laughs> oh, let's try a rational route for a minute here. So ask this question. Actually, ask a question here. So, what was the story that got you into writing stories? The story that got me into writing stories. Ooh. Um. I. Well, so, um, I really picked the burger up when um I was in primary school and. All other subjects I was eh, okay at, but writing was one where my imagination took hold. And they used to um, submit my stuff to competitions, and you know, some of my stuff got read out in assemblies and things like that. So I was like, oh yeah, this is really nice. So I guess that's reinforcing that writing is something that I'm good at and something that I do. Um, the story that I wrote all throughout university is actually the multi multiverse equivalent of the swordsman right so it's i started with his story first and then started writing the swordsman side of things and his was a lot more forceful and <laughs> insistent that it get public published whereas the other one is a lot more quieter and due to his upbringing <laughs> so <laughs> he's less he's happier to be in the in the shadows a bit more it's like oh um, thank god he, he's doing yeah he's, getting, he, he's the one getting his ass at, yeah yeah that's good so this is great <laughs> <laughs> he, he kind of reminds me of the first like Thor movie where Thor was a really arrogant prick and he got oh, humbled yes. over and mm -hmm. over again. Yes, exactly. And yeah. like maybe a bit of Doctor Strange too because he's an arrogant twat to start with. Well, Doctor Str Doctor Strange still is an arrogant twat when it's over though. See, mm -hmm. yeah, true. Like he learns compassion. He's still mm -hmm. a dick, but he learns compassion. But he, we love him. <laughs> Still he's our he, he's our dick. He's our dick. <laughs> he's <a> dick. <laughs> he is a dick, but he's our dick. And I th hopefully that's how my readers feel. <laughs> he's a dick, but he's, but he's our dick. dick. <laughs> he's our dick. <laughs> and it's also funny their characters like that yeah, ass. Like, like I said, the first mm -hmm. Thor movie. I think my favorite thing was the hospital. You cannot mm -hmm. hold the mighty Thor to give Mister Ring. He's like, Thunk. yep. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Okay. Yeah, and, and he wakes up and get then he gets tased again, he gets hit mm -hmm. by a car, he gets like he, he like Thor gets some gets a physical ass whooping on Earth. It's just like mm -hmm. but yeah. it, it had it's what humbled him. It's part of what humbled him. Mm -hmm. Is all these beatings were a shirt out, so I'm like, you suck. And you need to get stronger, but not in the way that you think. Yeah, that's right. And he did get stronger. That's why. That's why in, in the end, the hammer came back to him. So he, mm -hmm. he, he did something that was worthy of the hammer. Yeah. yeah. But but he's still a bit of an arrogant prick, a little bit. But then again, if you are that, you'd be you'd be okay just to be a little bit. So how good is your swordsman in the fight? Is he really as good as he thinks he is? He's really as good as he thinks he is. Yes, he's been trained to be the best, the most elite. He's constantly training. That's all in his life. He has a singular focus. That is it. He is the best. So, the so best. does he have like the Pokemon theme? Is thing I want to be the very, the very best. best. He really but should. No do, shouldn't he? <laughs> I was so yeah. Music while writing him is things like because I'm into Euro pop and things like that. But it's also um, is it Kanye West that's stronger, better, faster, longer? Just yeah, I, I don't listen. I don't. I, I don't listen to Kanye. Like, like I, said, I don't. I don't. No, my my my, my 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 my. I actually probably did, I'm debating writing a blog about this today. I somehow discovered. I see. I I bought Tyler Swift's Folklore album for five dollars, and mm -hmm. now I'm again listening to all her music. It's like okay. I, I I became a Tyler Swift fan. I'm like, how Excellent. did this happen? Yes. <laughs> I don't listen to her all that much because I'm too busy listening to gas, gas, gas. But yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, the most terrible yes. Euro beats. <laughs> I mean, at least, not the, at, that, at, but... at least not the baking soda song. The baking soda song. No, I've there's, a bake, there, 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 there's a rap about baking soda. It's done the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. So, I mean, at least, I mean, all things considered, I somehow feel 
your pot is might be slightly ahead of R and B. I could be wrong, but mm. uh -uh. Sorry, this is this is the not like pop pop, but um like Euro beats, which are fast paced. You shouldn't listen to this music if you have a heart problem. Um, multiple different <laughs> rhythms and uh. What are they called? I'm not a musical person, but all the different music happening happening all at once and very a lot suddenly. Of you like a lot of Discord. Discord. Yeah, a lot of Discord, and it's nope. and for some reason it's compelling. And then there's like somebody in you know who's Spanish singing in English for whatever reason and has an accent. It's brilliant, <laughs> and it all just works. <laughs> do you like my car? I'm like yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my my english speaking foreigners are, are I, I listen to japanese rock and roll mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. listening to the beach boys yeah it's like right. it's like it's like listening to the beach boys yeah but they do it in english and you're like damn yeah one of my favorite video wow. games of all time is mm -hmm. literally got a japanese like music soundtrack so mm -hmm. the final boss battle is like some of the best music i've ever listened to it's like a michael jackson tune Almost. Oh wow! Yeah. So no, it's um, it's so yeah. badass. Like it, like this is this is the final boss music and secret boss music in the game, and it's just like, mm. oh, this this, this this pops, and you just get caught in the music and get cacked the first time because he's like, I yeah. got caught. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, you've reminded me of some music because my husband plays a lot of video games, but Persona Five has got some really that, good music. That's the it. game, actually. That is the game. There you go. That's, that, that's the game. That's you and the me. final boss and the final boss music in there is called yeah. Rivers in the Desert. Right. And... It's now. It's never. And I got mm. to make my decision. This mm -hmm. could be my moment. And it's just, mm -hmm. it gets like yeah. the whole thing is so brilliantly done. Your mm -hmm. husband, if he listens to this conversation, is gonna be like, "Yeah, this guy's right. He knows exactly <laughs> what the hell I'm talking." That is an amazing soundtrack. Like even, yeah. even not just that song, like, like the boss music in there, like the regular boss music, mm. is is so badass. Like yeah. it's so so badass, right? Yeah. And and, and, but even, and when even just like walking around the streets, the music then is so lovely. Yeah, like, no, no, it, it, it yeah. it's really good. But the my, my personal. Rainy day is pretty good. Um, life will change, right? When you right, right mm. when you get into the palaces, like when you go to steal the treasure from the palace. Yeah, right. That is such a fun song, mm -hmm. and you get into the heart of the of the of the palace, and and you can tell I've played. I I I I, I beat. I haven't played the royal yet. I have played the first one. Mm -hmm. I beat everything in the first one because I, yeah. I really like that game. Yeah. Uh, the twins are hard. And anyone that's yeah. played the game, they'll know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't played the game, I'm not spoiling it. It's too good. Especially mm -hmm. the story is actually ridiculously good. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it's one of those. It's one of those things where you get to like, like again, the music, the tone, everything in that in that game is designed to fit the story of either the main character or the world he's in. And mm -hmm. it's so well done. Like again, when he fights, like the song I'm talking about, "Rivers in the Desert," it's truthfully his theme when he confronts the final boss like the second last mm -hmm. boss in the game yeah. right that one he has a personal event like that's his song mm -hmm. about the road he took to come back to this point it's actually mm -hmm. an, it's an amazing piece of music i actually it was in my head for two years so actually when yeah. i became a freelancer yeah that was because cool. well because because um the line that stuck with me with that is the first the, that little chorus I sung at the beginning. It's now, mm -hmm. it's never, and I got to make mm -hmm. my decision. Yeah. Isn't that like probably the biggest life lesson right in that moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, never. You just got to do it. Yeah. Grab it with both hands. And go nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, your husband, I think, would get along splendidly. I think I, I just based, <laughs> just based on this conversation. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, no, I got two kids now. <laughs> yes. Play video games? I will. So one of my one of my favorite things to do is to sit next to him while he is playing games. So I'll experience the game play and the story with him, but he'll do the, like, you know, the fighting e bits. And um, he laughs at me because... The first game I ever played on my own is um, Final Fantasy VII, 
but I never upgraded my equipment because I was like, well, this sword was given to you by grandfather or something. So like, I never didn't get the game mechanics of like, no, you're supposed to add stuff to it and then you're supposed to swap it out and sell it. And I was like, no, but this sword is special. So like playing as far as I could with like the base equipment and which wasn't, you know, I think I got onto like disc three or something and then it just got If, if you hard. made this three on base <laughs> equipment, you're pretty badass. But like, you know, <laughs> just attrition in every single battle and it's like you this could be so much easier so yeah he had a good laugh for me at that and then i'll yeah, play I, 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 yeah. I, mean, I mean yeah i mean <laughs> but the... I, I i mean you, you did that game on hard mode that's that's definitely for sure <laughs> that's badass so i'll play zelda because you don't have to mess about with upgrading equipment you just take your sword and you use it well yeah you could get to change your outfits if you need to go to a hot place or something um and then the other game was the other? oh pokemon and, and things like that but um uh it'll come back to me a bastion that had great music too like oh my goodness i so so games and the story had... yeah yeah so i i love okay so one of the games i'm playing right now it's not the best game mechanics wise mm-hmm. but it's got like one of the best themes i've ever heard so there, there's so the climax of the game is you fight mm-hmm. this evil dragon. Now dragons mm-hmm. come from the hot, the dark the dark side of man. Mm-hmm. So there's this moment about you fight long enough, the armies on both sides when they first see this dragon are completely terrified, and you have to hold your own against this thing for a mm-hmm. while. You're not, I mean, you're doing damage, but it's it's a tough fight. But as you get going, you encourage everybody, and suddenly the song starts to play. Like it's like the yeah. turning point of the, it's literally the climax of the game. Hmm. So it's, you know, it's the best music I've ever battled to. And mm-hmm. the cool thing is if you beat that and you have to go through that area again, the song is still playing mm-hmm. all the time you come in there. It's like, that's the song in this place. It's just like, yeah. that's really cool. Like that that's is the really that you've had exactly yeah. no it's it's a really cool little thing in the game that they did and it's just like wow like this mm. is great right yeah. this is this is great it's a neat neat part of the game mm. so yeah music i mean i i think i think the thing is i, I i've said this before I, I don't watch much television because mm-hmm. i'm too old like i'll go on facebook sometimes i'll see my friends going hey this show's great this show's saying it's like i'm not cool <laughs> want no part of it i'll read books like i'll start i'll read current books from today but shows no just can't keep up and like it's such a time investment like if if there's a show on we'll we'll have date night on a friday and we'll pick our shows really carefully and we'll watch a couple of episodes because like if i'm starting something at eight after eight o'clock and it's like an hour and a half that better be like amazing (laughs) because i'm in bed by half nine (laughs) I got a kid. I'm awake at six. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's okay. I, I, I can't make fun of that. I can't make fun of that. Also, I mean, I, I mean, on a personal, like on a date night with your husband, there might be other things you'd rather do than watch TV, yes, right? Yes, so, yes. I mean, t- t- TV, TV comes in maybe like, like okay, like for me, sometimes when I'm on a date, I'll pick a really bad show because if we get to the point where we're starting to fool around, you're not mm-hmm. going to care. You know, just, yeah, just, yeah. Like, yeah that can just play on in the background yeah yeah so i mean i mean that, that's interesting like 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 sometimes you're just like every once in a while you get you're really tired and you want to relax but for the most part it's like i don't really want to think about this show right now i'd rather do something like anything else right <laughs> so but video games see, that's tougher video games are can be fun mm-hmm. they can be engaging they can be interactive yeah right yep, good. And, and, and and the stories are as good if not better than that what are on television yeah and you like you feel instrumental in it a lot of the times it's like play mm-hmm. through this and get the cutscene play through this and get the cutscene but there are some really good ones where you get to like choose the path of the story i think those are the ones that he likes the most and i do watching them like um is it three em- emblems uh, ooh, I'm gonna, yeah, all I know is that there's three houses and you can pick which one you, you play and you play through the story as one house and then you get to see it from the other's point of view if you play through the story again. Oh, Three Kingdoms? 
Maybe. Maybe. It's like Fire Emblem 3. Okay. Oh, I haven't, I haven't played Fire I haven't played Fire Emblem yet. It's good. It's really yeah. good. No, no. I, I, I heard nothing but good things about it. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. even with games. So the games I like are like JRPGs, so like the Persona mm -hmm. series, like we, which we've already covered. But the other series I really like are the Tales games. Tales games. So they... Tales of Zestria, Tales of Zelia, Tales of uh, Berseria, Tales of Arise. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're... I've heard of those actually. So oh. they're 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 RPGs, sim mm -hmm. not quite like Persona, but they have the same kind of idea. You're beating the bad guys, you're leveling, and you're grinding. Mm -hmm. But what makes the game really good are the skits. Yeah. So 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 <laughs> so. Here's what happens as your team battles, as your teams mm -hmm. battle each other, right? As your teams battle, they form bonds and sometimes they yeah. do really stupid, silly shit. And it's mm -hmm. over. That's funny. Sometimes they're advancing the plot. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. And it's very clever. And this is just, that's just in game play. Then there's like, you go to certain places and certain things happen. Mm -hmm. You get these like skits out of nowhere. That's right? cool. Yeah. yeah. There, one of the games, one of the Tales games, I went the wrong way. I actually mm -hmm. went the wrong way. A skit actually appeared from nowhere that actually said I was going the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> it, was done, it wasn't done like in a clever way. It was just like the characters was like, one of the characters is like, hey, wait a second. This looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait i can't wait we're not supposed to go this way guys we're supposed to go the other yeah. way it's like, oh. <laughs> so it's functional and it helps you yeah and, you know. and it's and it's funny mm. and it's funny sometimes right so th there are some really really cool little moments here and there right mm. so so i love that's what i love it's also like plays like a fighting game once upon a time once upon a time i was really good at fighting games like mm -hmm. championship level good at fighting games right so mm -hmm. i'm not there anymore now 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 i'm just i i can pick on new people coming to try one of these games like because <laughs> yeah. my combos <laughs> still work but i no longer but i no longer have the muscle memory because mm -hmm. there is some muscle memory required in my head i still don't know what to do with some of mm -hmm. but with others no yeah and timing's not there anymore. You have to have the right timing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get yeah. it. I don't no. got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got it. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but I can have fun. Again, You, there's a time and a place for all these things. Once upon a time, I could go into an arcade and no one would want to face me in the game. No mm -hmm. one. I can't do that anymore. I enjoyed the, that experience and that journey, mm -hmm. right? So, and that, and and it's still like I'm, I, I'm never terrible at any of those games, right? I'm just not good, right? There's a difference. <laughs> yes, especially when yeah. you go on servers and people tell you. <laughs> oh, I, I, so so you, you you can have fun with people on the servers, right? Mm -hmm. I actually, one person, I deliberately got worse and worse and worse. Excellent. On purpose. Yeah. Just to hear. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were here. I was getting messages. Yeah. I was getting oh, messages. <laughs> right? It's like, you fucking noob. You should be like... playing here. <laughs> so then I played again. I do it worse on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I hate you. So people go... do get very invested. <laughs> <laughs> What, uh, one game, okay, one game I'm still relatively good at is, is Magic the Gathering. Like the, they had a digital game back in like 2015, 2016. I let my buddy mm -hmm. win. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. So one guy's like, oh, you suck at this. I go, no, man, if I wanted to, I'd clean your clock. Oh, I'd like to see <laughs> that. So I did. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. And he looked at me and was like, holy shit, you do know how to play this game. Yes. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And you need to just shut up. So when someone tells you, let my buddy win, just let him have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did not expect to be talking video games with you. <laughs> <laughs> I only so, sit and watch them, you see. And I, and I experience the story. 
How about a game like Mario Party or Super Mario Kart? So we'll play that with the little one, yeah. And you know, it's silly and it's fun and it's it's yeah. You can get um is it Isabel from Animal Crossing and you can have her on a on a horse carousel. That's totally oh, nice. what I do. <laughs> And it's the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> I, love, I love how you actually know video game lore. <laughs> yes, so I love it. Yes, See, video. I've picked it all up, like stories and things like that. They'll stay with me. So, you know, we'll do those. Another one that's um, stayed with me is Octopath Traveler. Have you played that one? I haven't played that one. That one I have not that's played. That's so good. So it's it's like eight different stories. It's a J is it a JRPG? It's an RPG anyway. And um you experience all eight stories and their resolutions. And the music in there is all oh my word, amazing. So ten out of ten recommend. Okay. Is it is it is it for Steam? Do you know? We played it on the Switch. I think it's a Nintendo game. See, I'm debating getting a Steam Deck or a Switch. Switch mm-hmm. is cheaper, but I get more games on the Steam Deck. Uh, yeah mm. right it's hard right it's pretty it's super hard yeah <laughs> i don't There's know how i can help you decide <laughs> you decide it's like i don't want to decide yeah. it's too hard <laughs> oh dear yeah but you know i might have a problem but that's okay so i'm going to a- ask this wonderful question then what do you like to when you're not when you you're you're not making the arrogant swordsman that 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 you want to get his ass kicked but doesn't Mm-hmm. Right. What do you what do you like to read right now for fun if you have time? For fun. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll often like be to read for people and things like that. So um lots of different fantasy stories. And then when I went on break from that, I am a sucker for um like I guess you'd call them historical, although they are not historical, romance stories. And they'll be set in in, you know, Victorian England, and it will be yeah. a duke, and it will be this and that. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, a sucker for those. It's, those it's, that it's, is my palate cleanser. <laughs> but, fantasy is uh, about evil rich guys from the past. Yeah, and it's oh, and it's lovely, and how they fall for the for the simple girl or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. how nice! And then sci-fi. So yeah, I'll also read quite a lot of sci-fi. What you read in sci-fi? So like um, I like Alistair Reynolds. I like um, his name's just flown out of my head. But um, the guy that has the incredible names for the ships, he's a Scottish guy. Peter <gasps> Hamilton. Oh my goodness! Now I've met Peter Hamilton. Not, I have read him, and he's good to also. He died unfortunately, but he's a Scottish guy. He has incredible names for ships. Like it won't be soon before long. He he wrote about the culture. Ian Banks. Oh, okay. Oh, that was hard. <laughs> that was membrane right there. Did you see that? <laughs> so we'll get that. I, I know I, everything I, else about him, but his name. <laughs> what the fuck is his name? What is his name? <laughs> He's a Scottish guy. He's dead. He's amazing. Ah. <laughs> Ian Banks. A dead Scots guy. I'm like, yeah. uh, oh, I can't help you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, Alistair, Alistair Reynolds, Peter Hamilton, Ian Banks. Um... Uh, and then um, Becky Chambers. So her yeah. her sci-fi stuff. I'm really liking those. So I, I kind of prefer the culture and um, Becky Chambers stuff um, because it is about people and uh, more about people. Whereas I, I see Alistair Reynolds as sort of a um, like a mystery writer almost with sci-fi elements to it. He, he, it's, he, yeah. He reminds me of an old school Arthur C. Clarke. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But here's the thing: Clark wasn't great at characters either. No. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so for what he writes, it's it's you know that that is that is his lane, and it is a good lane, and I like it. Yes. <laughs> when I'm in the mood for that I, lane, I, I, I sample I, I, that lane. <laughs> I, I I always preferred Asimov or uh, Bradbury mm. to Clark. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, I got um, I got the Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury. Oh my goodness, what a great! Because short stories, um, are my jam. Because like I just in and out. Like, <laughs> mummy so ain't got favorite. a lot of time. <laughs> so, so 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 my favorite my favorite Bradbury collection is Martian Chronicles. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to that, check that, that out then. It, no, you, you'll like it. You'll be like, this is like this one is sci-fi or Bradbury laugh because I don't write science fiction. 
I don't research yeah. any of this stuff. I just, yeah, but it's That's really true. good. It's really fucking good. The Illustrated Man is good too. Dandelion Wine's fun. Uh, mm. R is for Rocket. S is for Space. It's also, they're both like he's got so many good collections. You just just pick just pick ones you like. Yeah, and, and just yeah, just collect them and love them and yeah, bring them together. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm. But Becky. yeah, as a as a newer writer on the scene, I guess Becky Chambers writes some really good stuff, and it's and it's all about different cultures and how they act together. Um, the record of a spaceborne few has really stayed with me. Have you read that one? I have not read that one. Yeah. I have not okay. read Becky. I, I know who Becky Chambers is, but I have not read mm-hmm. her. I've read Hamilton. I've yeah. read Reynolds. I've read Banks. Banks, mm-hmm. the game, the one I really enjoyed for Banks was Player of Games. It's yes, an older one of his. Yeah, but, but it's so I, good. I, I, I love the poker esque concept mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and how you didn't even know how to play this game, but yet you knew how to play this game. It was really weird. Yes. No, it's really, no, you you you've seen you've seen the concept before, hmm, yeah. So it's just like it was really really good that way. So, hmm. so uh, I'd say if you you know the characterization that Ian Banks does for, and you really get into the heads of people. So Becky Chambers does that, and she does um, sort of uh, ethnography in sci-fi. So Record of a Spaceborn Few is about a spaceship that launched from Earth, got to the planet the where it was going to go, but it took millions. Of, well maybe not millions of years but hundreds of years so it's successive generations by the time they got there they didn't want to leave the ship because that was their home they would feel hereath if they left and so they've they've got this whole culture around like eating slop or you know um and how they recycle bodies and things like that and their whole uh, and and the sort of bulkheads where they came from and things like that they always leave a mark on it and it's about somebody kind of trying to transplant into that culture and just not being made welcome because like you're you're not one of us even though this is like a fifth generation on the ship they not real spacefarers either you know this ship has been in orbit around this planet for <laughs> a great deal of time at this point you're not a spacefaring people either but it's and then how that changes and oh chef's kiss amazing i get i get the feeling everybody's everybody's worlds get rocked uh yeah totally reminds me a little bit of beth, <laughs> i reminds me a little bit of beth rebus i don't know if you've ever read her stuff no i haven't no she's Set got a trilogy time. she's got a trilogy about a, a culture and in, going in space since generations removed and some of the issues that she, that you're talking about were in her back book too so nice all right yeah beth rebus is a really good good author um I'm currently reading a quote unquote legal drama, Mexican <laughs> legal, a Mexican legal drama is what I'm reading right now. So that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just br- break from my, 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 my escape of choice is Japanese light novels. Mm-hmm. They remind me of mm-hmm. the old pulps. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Sounds but Miss Becky, so Miss mm-hmm. Becky. Uh, I guess we'll do a one more question and we'll wrap this bad boy up because we've had a wonderful chat. It's nice to meet you. It's lovely and to meet you. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so, well, yeah, I actually have a conversation. First off, thank you for doing this. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I'm a little out of sorts. I, uh, I, I was on an hour and a half of sleep last night. So I'm going to do when this is over taking a nap. Oh my word. Yeah. So well, no, I, I had a client meeting early in the morning and I did a whole bunch of stuff before I went to sleep. Like I did a column and I did a podcast, like an audio version to go out. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a little, wow. I'm a little, uh, yeah. So, you know, somewhere down the road, maybe we do this again. I'm a little bit more awake. So we can have a little more leave and livelier conversation, not going beyond super villains and safe words and video games and other and stuff. Poo sticks. Yeah. And poo sticks. <laughs> Forget oh, how can you forget? Size of France, man. Size of fucking France. <laughs> right. So you've started your own series. Mm-hmm. Where would you like to go with it? Oh, so there are eight books planned in this series. I've published four. The fifth one um, is going to come out in March, and it's the subject of a Kickstarter, so I'm trying that out. But then... Um, that series obviously has a companion mirroring series in the other multiverse. So that's a place that I can go. And then two very nice characters are demanding their own very nice Victorian romance. So there's a Victorian romance arc going over in this direction. 
You have become what you read, Becky. You I know. Your... <laughs> I have ingested it. The and, RNA is being replicated. <laughs> and you're like, and you're like, I'm okay with this. Give me I am. Oxford romance <laughs> all the way in. So yeah, uh, jumping uh, both feet into this entire universe that I'm creating. Yes. Are you kickstarting the <laughs> art? Is it at the one you kickstartering? Or no, no. It's um. So I'm kickstarting book five, which sounds a bit weird. Um, but with printing costs the way that they are now, I just can't, I can't justify charging somebody 60 pounds for a book. That's just ridiculous. So like, I'm not going to do like special hardcovers or what have you. So I'm just going to be like, right, book five, I'd like a map, please, please raise 120 pounds and you shall also have a map. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> like teeny tiny, but right. you know, maybe that plays into what we were talking about earlier. And if you're not forthright and like yeah this is worth it book five is badass that's yeah. the character yeah, you, that i you, most you should. You, resonate you, you with should, you, like... you should you should just just come up with a cool way to get introduced people into the book like into yes. your series and you have a shot and mm -hmm. good luck and good luck so like, yeah the omnibus right so the first four are only available in this kickstarter so Ooh, nice. as an omnibus yeah you, do you have the link to the kickstarter i do yes you should send it to me in the private I shall chat. Send it to you. Okay. And send then it to me right in the private right chat now. right now. Be a train. Right now. For... Right now. Okay. A second. Look at that. It was on one of these windows. Where are you gone? There you are. Uh huh. Et voila. Yay. Our problem is I'm in Canada. So you're laughing at my money many, many different ways right now. <laughs> It's like Canadian money. Is that real? Mm. No, it's not. It's just not. There we go, folks. Hey. If, you guys, if you guys want to, and when this is over, send it me by email all these links as well, just so I can put them on the proper audio. But for folks listening and watching, uh, Metal the Master Mage next in Portal series is currently able to hit a follow on Kickstarter right now. You should go do that. And how can people find you? People can find me on beckyjamesauthor.co.uk um, and they can also come onto Facebook where I am Becky James Author and also Instagram where I am Becky James Author and also TikTok where I am Becky James Author and those are the three places where you can find me I get right? Yeah, well done Thank you, you know, work for this <laughs> so, Go there now if you want to check out, check out some of Becky's other works and you get and, a free book. Oh, and you get a free book. Mm -hmm. All right. So we go get that, that free book. And that, folks, will do it for the interview because I am pooped. I need a nap. And you pooped, uh, are you? Yeah, a little poop. <laughs> a little poop. All right. It was lovely no, to no, meet I, you. Thank no, you so was, much for having me on. Oh, oh it, this was fun. We, I, I definitely get the feeling we could chat for a lot longer. And I want to apologize. I feel like I'm not giving you quite what you deserve. But... It was lovely to chat with you. Good yeah. luck with your Kickstarter. I think that's awesome. To everybody watching, listening, go back to this page. Go check this out. And tomorrow, folks, I'm going to be on a little later in the day and with more sleep, I promise. Uh, I got an editor-in-chief of, of a magazine actually coming on tomorrow. So that'll be fun. So definitely come check that out. It'll be on Twitch first here. And that will do it for this episode just joshing. So if you've got nothing else out of this, poo sticks from France, folks. Poo sticks from France. <laughs> Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. I'll see you guys <laughs> next time. <laughs>